is Twitter dead already? The answer is no. Well, that's a real website that someone created and it actually says it out pretty loud and clear. But is it worth learning in 2024? Let's try to find out. So there are a few parameters which are important to really devise the worthiness of a framework used to develop softwares. Job prospects, funding and stakeholders, learning curve, popularity and developer ecosystem, then the user experience ex aspects, which are mostly like performance or the software size. For each of these parameters, we will see how Flutter stands up against its competitors like React Native, Kotlin, Multiplatform, .NET MAUI, and also uh, the native development. So quickly, why does Flutter or any cross-platform technology exist? So very short version of the story is, uh, you have multiple operating systems, they provide different UI toolkits to uh, paint pixels on the screen, different ways of doing network IO, disk IO, and interacting with these sensors. Now, one way is for you as an app developer to build app for each of these operating systems, or you can use a cross-platform technology, which gives you just one SDK in one language and abstracts out like the SDKs for all these uh, operating systems. Uh, so it's kind of a no-brainer, that's what I think. Anyway. Let's come to Flutter. Uh, so it's an open source UI toolkit primarily funded by Google. If you are interested in like having zoomed out view of how it works behind the scenes, what's happening. So I created this video a few days back. Feel free to take a look at it. Okay, let's talk about the first and the most important one, the job prospects. Well, if we take a look at the top paying technologies in the last four or five years, as per the Stack Overflow uh, developer survey, let's see the data from 2019. It's very fascinating that the Dart, which is the primary language used for Flutter, is not even there in the list. At the bottom of the list, we have Java for some reason. JavaScript is somewhere around the middle. Uh, we have Kotlin, which is above JavaScript. How oh, fascinating. And towards the top, we have Rust and the Go languages, which are like the most prevalent. Well, then two years after, uh, if we see 2021, that is where Dart comes into the picture. It is still at the bottom of the chart while the leaders still being uh, uh, like Go and Rust. And then towards 2023, the same trend continues. Dart is like still at the bottom. So I'm not sure what to make out of this data. Maybe it may be a case that the Flutter is being used mostly by the startups and mostly by maybe early stage engineers, which are not paid that much. Maybe that's the reason this data is kind of skewed. Maybe it means that the Flutter developers are not paid well. Okay, now if you see the number of openings for Flutter uh, on LinkedIn, uh, in the US, we have 834, just three digit. In India, we have 15, uh, like 1.5K. For React Native, in the US, we have 5.6K. And in India, we have 7.7K, roughly the same trend. Uh, for Android Native, in the US, we have 30,000. And in India, we have 15,000. But it's very fascinating that the trend here is reversed, that the openings in the US are even more. Maybe it means that the uh, India is cloud heavy? No. And same trend for iOS as well. In the US, there are 10.7K uh, and in India, it's 5.1K. So .NET MAUI, MA UI. In the US, uh, it has 474 in India, just two digits, 16. Similarly for Xamarin, which is anyway dying in the US, it's 20 in India, it's 15. So it probably means that as far as the job prospects are concerned, maybe Flutter is uh, not there yet. Okay, let's talk about the funding and the stakeholders. So how well a software project is funded kind of depends on the companies that are backing it, which we'll take a look in a moment. And regardless of that, like another aspect of uh, the funding is how much of a bang the project is actually making in the developer community. So let's take a look. If you see uh, Twitter followers, Flutter has around 259K, React Native has 201K, uh, then KMP doesn't have a Twitter page. Uh, if you see the Kotlin language, it has around 160K followers. Xamarin has around 67K. Uh, and on the uh, interesting side, Android developers' uh, uh, Twitter handle has around 2.2 million. Wow. Um, over to the Reddit, Flutter has around 134K, React Native is 129K, KMP doesn't have like a Reddit page, Kotlin language has 83K, and MAUI has 6.4K. Uh, Stack Overflow questions. Flutter has 178K, React Native has 137K, KMP has 1.7K and MAUI has 7K. GitHub issues. Well, Flutter, inter interestingly, it has like 12.5K open issues, 83K were closed. On the React Native, uh, they have just 609 open and 25K closed. And in MAUI, uh, they have 3.4K open and 9.2K closed. Well, th this one is very interesting. It kind of shows that, hey, maybe Flutter has a lot of open issues, but tons of them have been uh, closed as well. This probably means that 
the developers are really engaged in Flutter, like not just the ones who created Flutter, but the ones who are using it as well. And then GitHub stars. So Flutter has 164K, just the Flutter, like the code library, uh, but there is this Flutter engine as well, which has like separate stars. Uh, React Native has around 117K. Again, KMP doesn't have just one entry on GitHub. It was really hard, but the Kotlin language has 48.8K and MAUI has 21.9K stars. Well, one thing which is very apparent is Flutter is the one where the community is really engaged. And it's very surprising that Flutter actually released two years after uh, React Native, but still has the most engagement as far as the developers are concerned. Now, a very, very fun thing is that this doesn't align with the data that we saw earlier. I mean, uh, developers are not being paid, but it looks like that they are still most interested in Flutter. It probably means that it's quite worth learning Flutter. Let's talk about the primary stakeholders so over here. So Flutter is built by Google. So Google is like the primary uh, stakeholder here. For React Native, we have Facebook. For KMP, it's again Google and a shared responsibility with JetBrains. For MAUI, we have Microsoft. By the way, stakeholders are also kind of the companies which are heavily invested into Flutter or in other words, which are using Flutter. We have got great examples. So apps like Google Pay, Google Ads, YouTube Create, Google One, uh, Alibaba and Tencent use Flutter for a lot of their apps eBay uses Flutter for one of their uh, like primary apps, eBay Motors. Then Groupon, Dream11, Zerodha, Skite and Coin, whatnot. I mean, the list is just uh, like endless. So all of this actually enforces that Flutter is not going to go away anytime soon. If anything, it's on the rising trend. With that, let's come to the popularity and the developer ecosystem. Let's see Google Trends and uh, see the interest in these frameworks over time. Well, the only reliable thing I could figure out was React Native and Flutter and the .NET uh, MUDI platform. So it was actually in 2020 uh, when the tables turned and uh, Flutter started getting more hits than the React Native and the trend it is continuing as is. Then let's see the uh, popularity based on the Stack Overflow's developer sur survey. So Flutter is like where 3.4% of the people have interest. React Native is around 10.5%. Then two years after, we see that Flutter is catching up. Flutter is now a whopping 13.55% and React Native is 14.51%. Uh, and then two years after, in 2023, we see that Flutter has actually surpassed React Native. Flutter is now at a 9.12%, where, whereas React Native is 8.43%, which means that you see the trend? So it's definitely worth learning it in 2024 as well. Let's also spend some time seeing the popularity of the languages involved. So in 2019, we see that the Dart is not even in this uh, in this picture. JavaScript is leading. Java is also like one of the top languages leading here. Then two years after, we see that the Dart is now somewhere in the picture, somewhere in the middle, 6.02%. And JavaScript is still like, it's on the top. Then two years after, we see that Dart is still like kind of same. Uh, and JavaScript is still leading. So Java, uh, Golang, Kotlin, they are still like kind of in the middle. So what, what it kind of means is you start learning React Native, it, it will actually expand your skills because you'll end up learning JavaScript, which will be directly usable for uh, for web development and in backend development using Node.js. So by doing React Native, you will also end up learning something about CSS, not exactly, which will also help you uh, in web development. A developer ecosystem is also uh, kind of fueled by the packages and the libraries that are available for a technology. In the case of Flutter, we have around 46,000 packages uh, available for React Native. I couldn't actually figure out uh, how to get the number, but if you see NPM, it has around 1.8 million packages in rising. And even if let's say 10 or 20% are uh, like, uh, can be used on React Native, they are still like a lot. It kind of means maybe it's a little more mature than Flutter. KMP, now KMP is nuanced because uh, all the native packages are interoperable and you can call them directly from the code. So like whatever packages are available natively on Android and, and iOS, uh, all of them are like callable from KMP. But yeah, uh, there are like not a lot of uh, Kotlin multi-platform modules that are available as of today. There is a very nice GitHub that someone created that uh, lists out uh, f f a few libraries that are available. I'll add a link in the description. Let's talk about the user experience. And the first thing we have is app size. So Flutter works by shipping three things. First is the uh, Flutter engine, which is specific to the platform and brings the core functionality of Flutter. It also contains the Skia graphics uh, library and impeller render, which is responsible for rendering the pixels. Then we have the Dart runtime, which is the core Dart language stuff like the standard library and whatnot, which means that it will add extra bytes to your app. Now, KMP, uh, for a case where it's using, let's say, Compose uh, multi-platform as the UI toolkit. So similar to the Flutter, KMP ships like a graphics uh, library for the custom rendering. Now, the unique thing here is that it doesn't have any engine or a runtime. The Kotlin code is directly converted to JS for the web, 
Java on Android uh, using the direct compilation to bytecode and native code on iOS using Kotlin Net. Now, what this probably means is that the app size that you will get over here will be uh, like definitely smaller than that you will uh, get in the Flutter. Then React Native. Okay, so since the entire code is JavaScript, it ships uh, a lightweight JS engine along with the code because that is required to run the JavaScript code. But the unique thing about React Native is that it doesn't use a special rendering. In other words, it, it, it doesn't use custom drawing on the canvas. It uses native elements uh, for the rendering of the UI. Like if you have a view in the React Native, it will be mapped to a view in Android and a UI view in iOS. And for MAUI, uh, I think we don't even need to go into the details. Uh, maybe it's not worth it. Okay, huh. isn't it crazy how these technologies solve a similar problem, but taking a, like slightly different or maybe <laughs> Not slightly, but different paths. But the reality these days is that the app size really doesn't even matter uh, because the data is really cheap in most of the countries. But if that changes, if the data becomes costly, things will change. Okay, performance. So a native app gives you the best performance hands down. If you talk about KMP, uh, it can be used in a way such that the only the business logic is shared, but all the platforms uh, use their own native UIs. And in that case, my friends, performance is at par with the native. But you remember Kotlin transpires natively to all the platforms. But React Native, it, React Native suffers because of JS Bridge. Any action that happens on the UI layer is handled by the JS code, which, which means that it needs to go through that bridge, which adds uh, latency, but it's not noticeable. So moreover, JS being dynamically typed language needs interpretation during runtime. Further, so since Dart code is compiled to native components, it's really fast and performant. It still doesn't beat KMP and uh, native though. But you should wait for the performance uh, benchmark, which I will do in a separate video. Well, at last, what I'd say is if you have all the time in the world, just figure it out for yourself. Download all the primary apps using these frameworks and just spend some time and see how the user perceived performance looks like. And I know for a fact, Flutter won't disappoint you. And let's talk about learning curve. So the learning curve is mostly relative and it just varies from person to person, depending on the learning ability and their current knowledge. Well, first and foremost, if you know even a single composable UI frameworks, you can get started on any of these. It'll be kind of okay. If you talk about Flutter, for Java developers, this will be the simplest uh, because the language Dart is very simple. It's very like straightforward and very similar to Java. If you talk about KMP, if you are an Android developer, this is the easiest for you. I'm assuming that you already know Kotlin uh, and KMP is all Kotlin. So you will keep using the same language and you will have the code running on the iOS as well. The cherry on the cake would be the Compose multi-platform. If you know Jetpack Compose, you will be writing iOS apps in almost no time. Another thing to note is that you you actually don't need to learn the Compose multi-platform and you can write the UI natively, like you know, whatever you're using on uh, iOS and Android and build all the like the, all the other logic using KMP, which means it will remain common across the platforms. So if you don't have any experience with a composable UI framework, KMP is probably the easiest in that sense. Then React Native, uh, let me tell you one thing. At some point in your lifetime, you will definitely write JavaScript or TypeScript, which probably means that writing a React Native app would be simplest, assuming that you already know JavaScript. And at last, I'd also like to quickly mention about the developer tooling. Flutter has done an amazing job of providing some top of the line tooling around debugging network calls, uh, UI hierarchy, performance, memory, and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure I covered most of it, but if you think I, if I miss something very obvious, uh, let me know in the comment section. A lot of fun videos uh, coming ahead around the same topic and maybe a few blog posts as well. Stay tuned. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.